Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Today we are talking about the first novella in If It Bleeds, Mr. Harrigan's Phone. Um, this one is going to be a very short video. I plan to, because my internet has been so slow, what I plan to do is at after I get all these done, once the internet speeds back up, I'm going to be putting all these together into one episode. But right now I wanted to go ahead and get these out of the way. Uh, so all these videos, except for If It Bleeds, I'm sure that will be a very, very long episode. Um, all these videos will be rather short, um, the, the three out of the four anyways. For Mr. Harrigan's phone, the connections are very, very simple. Um, if you uh, have been a long-time fan of the show, or if you know about the, the Thursday Theory series that I do, um, or if you don't, this message is for you. Um, I have over 50 episodes so far in this series where I connect every single book uh, that Stephen King has ever written, even the short stories, novellas, everything, to the Dark Tower universe. Um, I'm very behind on that. I'm working on Storm of the Century right now. Uh, that one's a little, uh, it's a little harder to do because it is a script and I don't like reading scripts. Um, I thought about just doing the movie, but there's some stuff that I remember in the script that didn't actually make it into the movie, so I need to reread the story itself. On to Mr. Harrigan's phone and how it connects to the Dark Tower universe. In my uh, episode for Revival, I connected uh, Revival to the Dark Tower universe. I will link to that video down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but this one, this story occurs in Harlow, which is the same town in which Revival begins. So there's your, there's your hard connect, because uh, Revival has a hard connect to the Dark Tower universe. Um, and things like uh, the Black House, the Talisman, that kind of thing. Uh, in this one, also, there are m numerous mentions of Castle Rock and the things that happened in Castle Rock. And I've, of course, connected Castle Rock to the Dark Tower universe also. Um, some spoilers for the book. Uh, if you do not want to, if you do not want the spoilers, now is the time to click away. I was going to do separate spoiler reviews, but because these videos are going to be so short, I figure I, I go ahead and tack these on. This story was, was fantastic. Um, there, there's nothing really new here, but I did love the writing and I love the story. It's a bit of uh, Harvey's uh, phone call or whatever, whatever it's called from uh, Just After Sunset, I think is the collection that's in. Um, that one mixed with a bit of Gwendy's button box. Uh, it's a story about a boy who, and, and Hearts and Atlantis, there's a bit of that also because it's about a, a young man named Craig who reads to uh, Mr. Harrigan who's an elderly rich man um, who's, who can't see well. I think that's the reasoning for the reading. Um, I can't actually <laughs> remember, uh, but the, uh, the, the plot is, is built on the chassis that the phone that Mr. Harrigan is buried with, um, the technology he's buried with, uh, Craig uses it to enact uh, revenge on, on people. Uh, he, he keeps calling Mr. Harrigan, telling him about his problems, and even though Craig, it's a, it's a passive thing. He, he's not, at, well, there is a one point where he, he brings up specifically that he wants something bad to happen to somebody, and Mr. Harrigan, or whatever is lurking in place of Mr. Harrigan through this phone, is, uh, is enacting revenge on Craig's behalf. Uh, the, I think one of the most, uh, the, one of the most striking points of this story is the relationship between the main character Craig and Mr. Harrigan because these two characters are so vastly different and all the books that uh, Craig reads to Mr. Harrigan are about greed, are about corruption. On top of that their authors are problematic. Uh, this is from no information of mine, my buddy uh, Scott Kemper, he's the one who told me about this. I have not read the books by those authors because I did know that they were problematic, um, and I just don't care to read that. Also, it's just not my uh, genre of choice. But I find the not the really the world the character development without actually talking about the characters using the 
the, the fiction that Mr. Harrigan consumes and prefers to consume uh, balanced with uh, how Craig reacts to it, I think that that's the most striking part of this book. And while he does reuse concepts, the theme is wholly original, I feel. Um, especially the delivery. Like I said, you have, you have nothing that comes right out and says um, that Mr. Harrigan is a terrible person or that he's corrupt or that he's greedy or any of these things. It's all, it's all built in the subtext. And that's why I love this book so much. Um, of course, I've been hearing a lot of people going, "Man, it was okay," or "Is overdone," or whatever. And that's completely valid, completely valid points. But I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And the way it connected to revival, being in the same town of Harlow, I appreciated that also. So, did I miss anything? I know I didn't go down. Um, I actually wrote down all of the connections to Castle Rock on a uh, the back of an envelope, and then I lost the envelope. But uh, I know that there were numerous things in Castle Rock. So if somebody wants to put down there in the comments uh, telling people exactly which things that uh, they found specifically in Castle Rock, please feel free to. Um, the, I'll, I'll pin whoever you know has the most concise uh, I comment <laughs> down there in the doobly-doo. Anyways, so like I said, if I missed anything, please let me know. Uh, if you would like to talk about spoilers, you can fully talk about spoilers down there in the doobly-doo. Anybody who comes across this video and is upset about the spoilers, it, it's going to happen on these Thursday Theorist videos because I have to talk about the content of the book. So be wary down there in the comment section. I'll probably put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video too. Um, but let me know what you thought about certain scenes. I know we talked about whether or not people liked it in the actual review of the book. Now I want to know the scenes that you liked the most or the scenes that you didn't like the most. I would love to hear those things because I thought this story was fantastic. And I would love to hear your opinions on why you think it wasn't. So until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!